Who wants to learn QuickBooks? I don't hear you. A little louder. Want to learn QuickBooks? Watch these videos. And welcome back. I'm glad you found video number three for a QuickBooks tutorial. Yes, once again, QuickBooks 2014 and we are the hot doggers. No, this is not real for the third and probably not final time. I'm going to be saying this on every video. So, you know, just four to 10 seconds if you've seen my spiel already. So here we are, customer, which is accounts receivable, money coming in, the stuff we love, the stuff we stress about. And uh, a lot of the stuff will be under customers. <whistles> That's a big list, buddy boy. But we're going to start off with the basics, which is customer center. Same thing as vendors. If you're bored, you can add all your clients or you can add them as you go along. So invoice. Invoice basically means you're creating a somewhat of a bill for someone else and it hasn't been paid yet. It's still owed whereas sales receipt means that you're entering it into QuickBooks with the actual uh, action that the money came into you. You, you you took the money whether it was credit card a check some form you collected the money okay so those are the main two differences over here estimates are estimates which can turn into sales orders which can turn into invoices okay so depends on how sophisticated your operations are you may not need to do these two. Personally, for my operations, uh, I don't do estimates or sales orders. I just go right into invoice. I don't like too many steps. I like to keep things simple. So if you like things simple but detailed enough to a point where it's simple enough, keep watching these videos. Create invoice. No, I'm not crazy, guys. I'm just having fun with you. So, customer jobs, same thing like vendors, right? We could add new and uh, we could basically uh, put, you know, who's our customer over here? Sucker number one. Yeah, there's a sucker born every day. That's not nice. I know. It is not nice. So, this is going to be Mr. Sucker Uno. You can put whatever information you want over here. Hit OK. Trust me, guys. I, I, I'm a nice guy. I'm just having fun. There's no suckers out there. Not. Invoice 1001. You could uh, give it a PO number if you want. Uh, so if you got a PO from from them, you can put their. You can reference their PO number. Terms, you know, if you're giving them terms, or if not, usually then it's due on receipt. You know, rep if you have different sales reps. Via, if you want to actually mark down what you're shipping it, you know, by. So, quantity. Uh, this is where it could be inventory or it could be expenses, right? It could be one of a few different things. So, let's say if it's one, and we're going to call this. It was a service that we rendered and uh, basically it was tech support I don't know making things up well we're under the food sales right I don't know what kind of f tech support there is <laughs> but that's what we're doing we're doing some tech support on some online food sales there you go hit okay And so basically for the service, since it was a service, not inventory, that's why I put quantity one. I'm going to say this one costs 250. I can even go to the second line, put 500 and even now take it to an actual product. So we already have more than 500 in inventory. How do I know we have more than 500? Well, there's a couple ways to know. One way is we can go to list. We can go to item list. Widget 1. Total quantity 15,000. I got more than 500. 
and so we bought it what at nine dollars uh, let's say we're gonna sell it for ninety nine dollars you see there is a sucker born every day <laughs> Uh, saving new or saving clothes, either way. So, this is an invoice. For now, I'm going to do saving clothes. Yes, I've changed the terms. I would like to it to appear. As you can see, sucker one over here, we have a little history. So, this is nice to still have open, even though I don't come here to set things up. I do come over here to uh, look for things, edit things, uh, reference things. So, this is definitely a, a good place to come and look at the different things that you can play around with over here. All I'm saying is you don't have to spend here all day and think of all the customers you have. And sometimes you just have to add customers as they become new. So now that we've created the invoice, I'm going to have to receive a payment, right? However, let's not receive a payment yet. Let's do customer and we will do create credit memos. So for example, this is back to sucker one. And the item was widget. And let's say he returned 400 of them. Ah, he wasn't that much of a sucker after all, right? Okay, so $99. That's what we sold it. Unless, you know, there was a restocking fee. <laughs> okay, we could do 99. Uh, and have another line for restocking fee or you could just do it right off at the top okay either way um, it's just really how you want to report it even though there's probably a right and wrong way is there sometimes not <laughs> sometimes there's a couple different ways it's how you want to do it save and close so retain as an available credit give a refund or apply to an invoice let's apply to an invoice yep he owes us for this invoice done now let's do receive payments uh-huh see originally it was 49,000 with the credit now they owe 18 and that's what they're gonna pay us or let's just say they're gonna pay 50% right now I'm gonna do save a new sucker one and then you can see the balance over here okay so that's one way of recording it so for now I'm gonna leave here I'm not gonna do anything with this one you once again you can kind of see the little history over here right invoice credit memo payment booyah kasha so now what are we gonna look at next enter sales receipt Someone walked into my little hot dog stand and they bought a hot dog right there on the spot. So, one thing I don't see over here is allowing me to put what bank I want to put it under. So, I think we're going to go back to edit, preferences, and then just secret number two. And... I believe it's under sales and customer company preferences <laughs> I'm gonna hunt you down I don't see it under sales there we go under payments uncheck this box where it says use undeposited funds and by doing so I'm gonna hit OK We're going to go back to enter sales receipt. And this is what I was looking for. Instead of putting it undeposited, I want to have it go right into a bank account. So undeposited basically puts it into this holding place. And then once you, and, and this is really more for if you received the payment, but uh, you haven't deposited yet, or if you have uh, mul uh, multiple deposits in one transaction, Personally, I just like to uh, take it right to checking. So that's the way I do it. Um, there's a couple ways to do it, but that's the way that I like to do it. And so uh, we received, uh, let's say, a cash or check. It could be one or or. And this was for widget number one. And we just basically sold one at uh, $300. That was our retail. 
division, right? So, um, got the cash and I, uh, well, if it's actually cash, it should go into petty cash. And then if you deposit the money into there, you can do a transfer, either or. So we'll just say that it was a check. Okay. Save a new. And there you have it. That's how you do enter sales receipt. Next thing I want to show you is back to customers. Let's go back to receive payments. We'll go back to that one $9,000 payment we got. And as you can see over here, this one to undeposit it. So I'm actually going to change this real quick to uh, checking account. I'm also going to make sure that it was uh, noted as a check. Save a new, bring it back again. The reason I did those two things is because I just really wanted this record bounce check thing to appear over here. This is a new feature that's only on 2014. That's right, it's not on any previous version and it cuts a few steps into it. Awesome stuff. Record bounce check. So basically you deposited this check. It got bounced on you. You know, I guess the sucker was not a sucker after all, right? We keep going back and forth. You know, who's going to be the ultimate one at the end? Who shall get the last laugh? Ha, ha, ha. Bank fee. So now I got charged $25. I'm not a happy camper. That's not cool. So you know what? I'm going to make the customer pay for it. I'm going to put $25 thing over here. And it basically creates a, a bill for them or... A, you know, somewhat of a, a, a credit away from them. So we're gonna hit finish or next. And these are the three steps that it did by just doing that one function. So it pretty much did all the kind of transactions that you had to do it manually before. And when you hit finish, you know, there you have it now. I'm gonna do save a new. I'm gonna bring up sucker one again. And uh, we got the replacement check. There's that $25 fee that they owe for the for the check. So let they so they say they send $9,025. Whoop! And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to 9,000 over here. Check this so I can calculate that the 25 was really for this invoice right over here. It's going to leave this original amount due. And yes, it's going back into checking account. Save and close. And that takes care of that. And the last cool thing I want to show you for this third video is another new feature that's pretty cool from QuickBooks. It's called the Income Tracker. It track everything in one page. <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing. It's also color coded. So you can see what's open over here. You know, everything is kind of like in a quick glance. Um, just different options. Just play with it. I'm not going to show all the options because this is so easy. A five-year-old can do it. Yes, I said it. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Or was it a five-year-old? Either way. That pretty much takes care of this and the next video we're going to go into banking, reconciliation and different things like that under the banking. That's the next video, video number four.